Uh, a woman drinking a cup of coffee. What's unusual about this, and something that you won't see in advertising very often, is a pregnant woman like this drinking that same beverage. The reason for that has to do with concerns over excessive amounts of caffeine, which are then passed on to the innocent bystander, the fetus. The fetus has an immature liver, of course, and is unable to metabolize caffeine in the same way that a mother would. This can lead to excessive buildup of the metabolites of caffeine in the baby, and this can be associated with some pretty scary effects. Mind you, these effects are seen with copious amounts of caffeine, but would include such fearsome things as stillbirth, growth restriction, and possible risk of miscarriage, just to name a few things. You might be wondering why I call this a wonder drug if it's something that pregnant women are generally avoiding. Well, look no further than what's about to follow. When babies are born preterm, they often lack the ability to regulate their breathing. They have an immature respiratory center and as such are prone to a condition called apnea. This condition leads to pauses in their breathing and because of their immature lungs, we can see drops in their oxygen saturation and heart rate called apneas and bradycardia when they are born very young. I did my training in the late 1990s through the early 2000s and it was in 2006 that a landmark study called the CAP study, the Caffeine for Apnea Prematurity study was published. This is a table from that study. What this study revealed in babies that were born from 500 grams to 1250 grams and treated with caffeine or placebo was that caffeine in babies was a pretty good thing. When the authors looked at 2006 babies that were randomized to either the placebo or the treatment arms for caffeine, they found a significant reduction in the risk of something called bronchopulmonary dysplasia. This is a long-term lung injury in babies. We define this in preterm babies as being on oxygen supplementation or some form of respiratory support at 36 weeks post-menstrual age. The babies that received caffeine had on average about 37% less risk of having long-term lung injury, probably because they were stimulated to breathe and didn't need to be on breathing machines called ventilators for a prolonged period of time, which can damage the lungs. Caffeine happens to work by blocking adenosine in the brainstem. The arrow there is pointing to approximately where this occurs, which is at the top of the medulla oblongata in the respiratory control center. Very interestingly, when you give caffeine, it stimulates babies to breathe by blocking adenosine. Now, the opposite is also true. If you give adenosine, such as to an adult or a baby who is having an irregular heart rhythm, it will actually lead to a pause in their breathing. Caffeine is so effective that pretty much any baby born less than 34 weeks this, these days will get at least one dose, if not maintenance treatment with caffeine. Please know that we give about a cup of coffee a day in terms of caffeine load to our premature babies. So trust us, it's not excessive. There you have it. If you like this and other videos about prematurity, give me a like, a follow, or consider subscribing to this channel. Thank you.